He got you to go on those family trips back to Mexico. Was Pete part of that? He went one time, I think, with us. And then after that, it was just jail. He was in jail or then I, he passed away. So you knew Turner? Yeah, I did. He's come out of the house a lot? Yes. Part of one of Pete's really missions was to be quiet in the cut and listen. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get whatever was said later on from Pete. And, and Pete was very good at that. It just lay in the cut because he had that dark complexion, that curly hair. And you're right, they would not They would mistake him for something mm -hmm. other than what he was. Yes. But there's an earlier picture where there's no mistake in Pete is a Mexican. But, but with the 38 picture? Right. But as he, you know, he evolved, he changed, right. you know, and then you got to look at how he dressed and how he came across and how he spoke English. You know, it came across just like he was from, you know, he was from Santana and he spoke as Santana. In other words, he spoke Santana. She's, she's probably too young to know when Pete actually officially crossed over to Santana. What year? That would be something that you would have to answer. In 1984, there's a picture, myself, Turtle, Twin, Pete, Big Bus, Gertie Montana, Scrunchy, Rat, and RC that, that's that been shot around the world. It was taken during the BBC documentary in 1984, and we all in the picture in the back house with guns and doing our thing, and we were, Turtle was being interviewed, and Scrunchy was there, you know, I better watch, you better watch out, guy. You know, everybody knows him. And Pete is sitting right there in front of you, this little kid down there, hunkered down with his 38. <laughs> He was an official Santana? Yes, time? he was official Santana. Have you seen this documentary before? Uh, yes, I have. Has your mom and father seen this documentary before? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I've showed her like the little clip, like the picture, you know, the picture, like just a still picture of it. Yeah. So one more question, Nancy. <laughs> Pete, so to speak, was uh, a gatekeeper. And when I say gatekeeper, he got to keep all the guns, he got to keep all the dope, and he kept large sums of money for Turbo, mm -hmm. right? Did your, was your parents ever aware that all this money and dope and guns was moving out of their home? No. Were, were you aware? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, um, yeah, that was his job. And he held it, and he was, he was But then he was good at it. He was very good at it, because nobody knew where he would hide right. this stuff. But he can go get it at mm -hmm. drop of a moment. When Pete passed, what's the story behind that? The story behind that? It was a drive-by and, you know, some enemies. I don't know if I should say who they was. I can say who they was. Or, no, just leave it like that. Leave it like that. Okay, well, some enemies passed by and he was sitting outside, like next door to my house. And they shot and I believe he got, um, somebody else got shot out there and then he got shot, I think. But when he tried to like, you know how they shooting and he tried to throw himself like, I think the bullet would hit him right here and it ended up like up here, you know? So I guess that's from like trying to dive out the way it, the bullets, Still went on the right path and right there, but I just knew it was a drive-by here. Yeah. What, what year was this? 91. This is in front of the house? Or? Yes, in front of my house. Who was home at the time? My mom, my dad, sister. I wasn't home. So they came outside? Yeah, inside I'm meeting. assuming I wasn't there. That day that he got killed, he went to a funeral that day. Pete did. Yeah, for Mrs. Co Mrs. Coleman, which lived across the street, Scooty and Kibo's uh, grandmother. And he went to a funeral. And that day before I left, because, you know, I was hanging out. I was like 15. He was uh, next door to my house and he was sitting there listening to music, like, because they just had got back from a funeral. And I didn't see him no more till somebody told me that he got shot. Down, downstairs, you showed us an obituary. And in the obituary, it says the funeral was in Hermoso Beach. 
So uh, because of, I guess, they didn't want anything to happen at his funeral, like any shooting or anything. So they made his, uh, the, fu the funeral arrangements were at Rice Mortuary in Torrance. And that's the, uh, I guess, the Catholic church that was affiliated with that mortuary. Did the Santana show up? Yes, they showed up. Yeah. And mom and pop seen this? Yes. What was the reaction to all these guys from Compton showing up to Muscle it, Beach? It wasn't. Couldn't be no reaction. I mean, I guess they wasn't focused on that. They was, you know. But they knew everybody anyway, right? The majority of people, yeah. That was a lot of trauma that day. Yeah. And uh, how did it initially come off? For your mom and dad, you know what I mean, to be witnesses to the circumstance right in front of their house, right in front of their eyes, right with, I mean, you're just right there, you know what I mean? Do, did you, can you recall that? Yeah, and I still recall to this day, it hurts them. That's their only son, you know? And they had to walk out and witness their son being shot. My dad tried to get in the ambulance, they didn't let, they pushed him out of it. They didn't want to let them get in the ambulance, you know? And uh, your mom and sisters were there as well? Yes. Let's go into, what did you think of your brother? What type of guy was he? I thought he was a, to me, he was like my, like my hero, even though like, you know, other people looked at him some kind of way. That was my brother. I mean, he'll whoop my ass and everything like a big brother do. You know, my mom tell him do this. and I just looked up to my brother. I, I can't say I wanted to be just like him because he's a boy. I mean, a man, you know, but I looked up to him. Did, so, did he hustle? Did he low ride? You say he had pigeons? What type of hobbies? What things was he into? Uh, he had pigeons. He did the little model cars. I mean, low riders. He didn't have any low riders, but he hung around Turtle and he had low riders. And you know, then at I believe the paint shop on um, what's that Banning Lil Willie's paint shop over there. And you know, uh, he mostly a hustler. When I've seen, you know, back back when he went to YA, what what year was that, and how long was he in YA for? Oh shit. Um. I'm going to say probably like, oh, 86 probably. Because I know he got four years for something. I don't, I don't know if he actually did the exact for all four years, but he got out. I don't know if it was 89, 88 or 89, right before Turtle got killed. He got out of jail. Oh, so he was home for when Turtle got killed? Yes. How did he respond to Turtle's death? I, I think it hurt him a lot. How close was he to Turtle? When my brother got out, I remember him getting out, and I always remember this, and I tell him too. I remember Turtle had a um, a black blazer, you know, and I remember my brother got out, and he wasn't even dressed. He still was in his boxers, and Turtle pulled up outside. He, like, ran to the door, you know, like, because Turtle was checking on him. I guess he was fresh out, like, telling him, I'm going to come scoop you up because he was still getting dressed. But it's just... I mean, that's, I remember, like, little things, you know. He wrote something in Turtle's obituary. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, I heard, I seen the interview. And then Diane is always telling me that, you know, oh, he wrote this. I'm going to send you a copy of what he wrote. Mr. Turtle. Yes. Yeah, I miss you, Mr. Yeah. Turtle. Yeah. You, you and Diane are, are friends. Yes. Good friends? I look up to Diane. Diane is a good friend. Did, did, did Peter go to prison? Did he ever make No. It? No? You was telling us earlier about Tom Moyer. Yeah, the interview. Yeah, tell us about that. About the interview about is their Mexican Crips. <laughs> it was an interview that was taking place on Willow Street. And the um, newsman asked them, "Are you mean to tell me they're Mexican Crips? And they said, yeah, it's Mexicans is all kinds of Crips. Because they were referring to the Willow Street Santana Block Crips. Do you remember what year that was? <sighs> Mm. Mid eighties, probably the late eighties. After he got out, yeah, the late eighties. Are you from Santana Block? Uh, no, I'm. When I when I dig, I'm a woman right now. Let me tell you that first and foremost. But when I did gangbang, I was from Willow Street. But they was 
part of Santana Block Compton Crip. Once they start beefing with each other, I just drop that completely because my brother is from Santana, so I'm going to ride with Santana. So Pete was alive while you was from Little Street? Yeah, I was claiming it. Yeah, well, you know, he didn't know I was doing what, what I was had to do. What was your name? Giggles. Why giggles? Because you see me laughing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so Pete didn't try to stop baby sister from being from Willow. Pete Street. used to whoop my ass when I used to try to hit them two blocks to go on Willow. He'll, my mama send him and he'll get out with a belt and whoop my ass in front of everybody and dare anybody to say something. He'll fight them. What, what, what made you go on Willow Street? Is because they were your age bracket? Because I had friends that was Juju sisters. They from um, lived on Willow and they were his Mexican like me. So, I mean... It just kind of all made sense at that time to be from a Mexican gang. So you didn't consider yourself a, a, a Crip at that time? Strictly Willow Street? No, it was Crips back. It Mex the Willow Streets was from the Crips, from Juju, made the Willow Street Santana block, Compton Crip. So, so when they fell off, when Santana and Willow Street broke apart, was Pete still alive? No. So... Turtle gave Pete a 6'4", right? Yes. What was what was Pete to his surprise? Was he surprised or was he happy? How did he take it? He was happy like it was a brand new car when he brought that car <laughs> home. <laughs> so what did Pete do to the car? Man, he, he didn't do nothing to the car. <laughs> he just, it had like the best hydraulics in the trunk. He didn't never get it hooked up, nothing. He he All he did was put beat in it and just roll that motherfucker like that. That's it. Did you ride in the four wheel? Yeah, I did. Okay. So how many pigeons did Pete have? Pigeons? Yeah. There was a lot of pigeons. Yeah, like rollers and... I don't even know nothing about pigeons. Okay. But he had pigeons in the back. My husband know a lot about pigeons. He Who pigeon. was your husband? Drat. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's Pete, man. Who, who, What's who, going on? Who, who got Pete in the pigeons? That was just a neighborhood thing, I believe, at that Sit time. Sit next to your wife, right? Don't get shot. <laughs> That was just a um a neighborhood thing. Them having pigeons, raising pigeons. And, and, and your parents being traditional Mexican family, what did they think about pigeons in their backyard and that whole? You know what? He was the only boy, so he really could do like basically what he wanted he to. His mom, with his mom, everything. His dad, everything. He's the only boy. It's five women in front of him, then him, and then me. So. He got away with everything. Wow. So he had, was he in the, he had a 5.0 too, right? Yes. So how did he come to that? Being that he was, you know, like a little kid, but he had all this money. In he it. was a hustler. <laughs> so how did y'all meet? I've been knowing him. So what's his name? <laughs> oh, Drac. <laughs> Drac, man. Bastard. Drag Bastard? Where you from? I'm from Santana Block, huh? Okay. And how long you guys been together? We've been together since um, 2008. Oh, uh, that's when you got married? Or that's when you got That's married? when we got together. Okay. Okay. But and we've been knowing each other for the longest time. Right, right. From okay. the neighborhood. Okay. I, I, I want to dive back into your, your, your gang days when you were from Willow Street and uh, Santana and, and Willow Street broke relationships and you said you walked away. How was that even possible still living in the neighborhood? Because I it always was Santana from the beginning. Like if you know now, you could be like, if we in the hood, you could be like, I'm from Rose Street because you was brought, raised, born, you know, lived on Rose. So it's not like, it wasn't like that because Willow started as Willow and with Santana because Juju lived on Willow, you know, it just happened to be that other Mexicans that lived on Willow Joined that part of the clique. It was basically like a clique from Santana, but it was Mexicans So when you walked away, what do you mean by that? I just stopped claiming Willow Basically Well, what, what year did your family move out of Compton? And we still, well, she still lives in Compton same street? Yes. 
Same house? Yes. Oh, wow. Right there. Last of the Mohicans. Ooh, one of them. One of the last of the Mohicans. There's still a couple of families that's not a lot. There's some, a lot of more Mexicans that live on that street now. But any, any Santanas left on that block that you grew up with? Who's still on that block? Still got kite right there. I know. We still got kite. Um, Ears. Ears. Longino. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. The Longinos are still there. Uh, that's basically it. So I'm, I'm assuming your, your your father bought that house. Yes. Do you know how much he bought it for in 1979? Probably cheap as hell, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs>